I'm Tony, and today we are doing block number five, the cat, for the pixelated Halloween quilt along. I am loving this quilt along so much, and this block today is probably the easiest block of the entire quilt along. Um, it's a lot of fun, I love it, and I can't wait for you to see it. Block five, the cats. Uh, first thing we want to do, of course, is grab our fabrics. This one, we need three of them. We need our black fabric, we need a purple fabric, and we need our light yellow fabric. So I've grabbed all of those, and we are making this as part of the pixelated Halloween quilt along. So we want to skip this if we're making it as a standalone. We're going to go right here to the pixelated Halloween quilt along. Use the following strips from previous blocks and do not cut additional strips of them. We need a black two and a half inch strip. Now, I of course remember I like to double mine up, so I have I have one big one and then a little one here. But we always want to mark one off, so we're going to change this to to a one because we've pulled one previous strip, so we want to mark that off. Uh, okay, and then a black light yellow combined strip. Well, that's this right here. So I need to mark off one of the blacks and then the light yellow. Oh, well, you see what's happened with that. I no longer need the light yellow, so I can pat set that one aside. So we only have two fabrics to cut. So let's cut those fabrics. Um, now I need one two and a half inch black strip, a one and a half, and then the purples. So, okay, so let me do the purple first. Now we've, in this quilt along, we've gone through um, a couple of times about how to cut the strips, what to do with it, things like that. Uh, if you need a refresher, there is my, there it is, I couldn't find my ruler. If you need a refresher on how to cut strips uh, and do stuff like that, take a look at block number one. Uh, I have a whole section on how to cut strips, different options, different things. Um, so take a look at that video for this quilt along for block number one. And then it will go through a lot of that stuff. For today though, I'm just gonna move a little quickly when it comes to cutting the strips and cutting the pieces because this is something we've gone over a couple of times already. All right. We did, oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot the one and a half inch strip. I cut the three two and a halfs, but I forgot to cut the one one and a half. There we are, perfect. Okay, we've got that. All right, so then now I can set this aside and then we need the black. Now I've already got one of the um, two and a halfs and one of the one and a halfs. So according to my new chart that I marked, I'm only cutting one of each, a two and a half and a one and a half inch strip. So let's go ahead and cut those. So two and a half and one and a half. And that's it. There we are. Now, after we finish cutting our strips, the next step, we want to set aside all the one and a half inch strips. Well, that's really only these two, because this is a super, super easy block. So I'm going to set those aside. Now we want to cut our pieces. Now you notice how there's no yellow pieces that we're cutting at all. It's only the black and the purple. This is because there's only a single yellow spot and we're going to be using that as part of the the combines right here if you are doing this as a standalone block you do not want to have to cut an entire one and a half inch strip <coughs> for just that yellow piece so what you may want to do is cut a one and a half inch square of both a black and a yellow piece and if you do that you can skip cutting this is doing one of the black strips and of course the yellow strip uh, so keep that in mind if you're making this as a standalone if you're not doing it as part of the quilt along all right so let's cut our pieces. so with the black 
Let's go ahead and grab this. Now, really quickly, I want to remind you that whenever I cut my black, whenever I cut my two and a half inch strips, I like to stack them. So let's go ahead and iron this, and then I'll iron the purple, and I'll show you what that means quickly before I go to cut all the pieces. So I'll show you, I know I mentioned it uh, last week and a couple of times before, um, how you stack and cut multiples, but I'll actually show you this week in case you're interested in saving some time and cutting multiple pieces at once. Now, we always, well, I always, of course, you don't have to do this, like to keep my strips folded so that I cut my, my pieces two at a time. That's not something that, uh, that you have to do, which is something that I prefer to do. There we go. And that's all the ironing. So in the case of the purple one, whenever you're cutting multiple strips, you want to lay your strip out just like that. I like to make sure when I'm laying it out that I follow along a line on my cutting mat. And that just makes it easier for lining it up. So let's see, I need to cut 12, 15, and 11. All right, so if I do this, if I stack two, one on top of the other, I am not cutting four pieces at a time. But wait, there's more. If I just take all three strips and line them up, I can cut six pieces at a time. So in the case of the purple, I am cutting 12 of the four and a half. Well, there's six and 12. And just like that, I have all of my four and a half inch pieces cut. Whoops. Oops, where is my scissors? Scissors, scissors. It didn't quite go through all the way. There we go. Now, whenever that happens, if it doesn't quite go through all the way, don't rip it because what will happen is you can pull the threads out of your fabric and cause damage to the actual fabric and then you couldn't use that piece, which is not a good thing. Okay, and then... Um, for the one and a half, so I need 11, so I'm just going to cut 12. So there's six and 12. There we are. Let's make sure they're, yep, they're all separated. Now, in the case of the two and a half inch squares, I only need 15. So six, so if I cut six, 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 it's going to be a little, it's going to be 18 and that's not, that's going to be too many. I don't want to do that. So what I want to do, let's see, I'm cutting two and a half. There's six and 12. And then I'm going to take one of these away so that now I can cut 16. So now I have 16 and then I can take one away. Oh, I forgot to take one away from here because I only need 11, not 12. And there we are. I have all of my purple pieces cut and ready to go. Now with my black, I ha already have one that I have lined up and already started, but I still want to stack this. So how do I do that? Well, I want to take the one that I just ironed and I'm going to layer this so the you see how the fold is right here for the one that's already cut i'm just going to line this up on the left because that's where i'm going to start my cuts and i'm lining this up just to the right of where that cut piece has finished and i go through it all right and then i need eight four and a half so there's four eight take those away and then I need three two and a half oh look I only have one that I've cut before I really only need two more but I need eight one and a half so I'm gonna cut those first so let's cut those four eight and then I can take this away 
and I just have that single one that I'm going to cut a two, a two and a half. There we are. And now, and then of course, here's the three I've had from before. All of my pieces are cut. And it is that simple and that fast. Uh, for those of you who are watching this video as a, um, as a standalone block, uh, this is the Stripology ruler. I absolutely love it. As you see, it makes things super, super fast for cutting. Links to it is are down below. All right, so that is page number one. Page one is finished. Let's go on to page number two. So using the one and a half inch strips, so the right sides together for each of the following combinations, a black to a purple, a black to a light yellow. Well, we already have the black to the light yellow, remember? So all I have to do is sew that black to that purple. So I'm gonna go ahead, speed up the video. We're gonna sew it. I'm gonna come back and show you how to iron those strips once you've sewn them. Uh, and then we can get those cutting on the uh, combined strips. And that's it for sewing strips this week. Now with this one, um, remember whenever we sew, we cut our strips in half, uh, this is um, step still step number two. Um, we wanna make sure we try to maximize this as much as possible. So I'm taking a look at my uh, salvages and I'm lining it up so the salvages line up. So you see how those salvages line up? Now that one doesn't quite line up, but that's okay. I wanna line up the salvage to salvage right there. So, and because I want to try to maximize as much fabric as I possibly can for ironing. All right, let's iron this. Now, the step number three, remember we wanna iron these in opposite directions. What that means is we wanna iron, iron one strip towards the black and iron the other strip towards the purple. I talk about this every week. Uh, whenever you're doing your ironing, there's a lot of um, quilting uh, beliefs out there about how you should iron things. Um, there's a lot of things that should be ironed open. And so because of that, a lot of quilters think that everything should always be ironed open. There's a, another one of iron towards the dark. And that's just so you can't see that darker fabric underneath the lighter fabric. Because if I have a black fabric and I have a white fabric, if I iron it open, you're gonna see that dark fabric behind on that light fabric. This is pixel quilting though. Pixel quilting is all about perfect points. And you get those perfect points by nesting seams. And that is why we need to iron these in opposite directions. So even if you're super used to ironing open or ironing towards the dark, in this case, for the pixel quilts, please, please, please alternate your seams and pay attention to those seams when you're laying it out. It really doesn't make a difference and it doesn't add any extra bulk to what you're doing because we want to nest the seams. Now this, for those of you that are new to pixel quilting, is nesting seams. So you see how, there it goes, you see how that, that fabric is going towards the purple and that fabric is going towards the black. Whenever you line those up perfectly, just like that, you're gonna get a perfect point every single time. And that's how it lines up. So we wanna go ahead and nest those seams for the cutting. So we've got this laid out. Okay, and let me go ahead and start cutting it. Now, for the black and the purple, I need three sets of my two and a half. So there's one, there's two, there's three, and then I need eight sets of my one and a half. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Now, do I have any left over on the end? Let's measure it. If I have at least an inch and a half, I do. I have at least an inch and a half left over on this, so I'm gonna set mine aside. If you don't have at least an inch and a half left on yours, don't worry about it. It's perfectly okay. Just don't set it aside. So I'm gonna take these, and when I lay my pieces out, I like to separate them in two separate piles. So that as I'm grabbing the pieces and laying the pieces out, um, it's easy for me to grab from the pile that I need. So do I need it to go towards the black or do I need to have it go towards the purple? So it all depends upon the side that I'm looking at. Okay, so, and let's take a look at the black and the yellow. Now, I only need one set because remember, I only need a single piece. So let's cut that single one set of the black and the yellow. Now, I'm not, I, I know I only need a single piece of this, but I'm gonna take both of those because honestly, I don't know which way I'm gonna need for the, for the seam to be pointing yet. I can set it aside after, it's not a problem. So I'm gonna take both of these and set these aside. And all of our pieces are cut out and we can move on to step number four. All right, let's lay our pieces out. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna set it aside. I actually, over here, I'm gonna have a sheet of paper that I'm going to do this. And I'm constantly laying this out and looking at the pieces so that we can see laying them out here. Um, and then I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm just gonna move them over here so I can see the pieces that are being laid out. There we are. I've got those. And then, yeah, I'm gonna put those up here. And that's it, that's it. There's not a lot of pieces, which is great. This is awesome. All right, so row number nine. All I'm doing is I'm taking the pieces I just cut and I'm finding where they are on there and laying them out. So I've got that and then that one there. Now this one right here, this is where we alternate the seams. So this piece I grabbed right here, it's going up towards the black. So the next piece, I wanna make sure it goes down towards the purple. Because when I sew these together, I wanna make sure that I have that perfect point. So I'm gonna alternate those seams. So remember, alternating the seams is what gets us that perfect point every single time. It is a, uh, it is, it's actually pretty, it, it's, a, it, you may not get the very first quilt you make, but the more you practice and the more you make, you're going to get those perfect points. Okay, so now let's pin this. Our arrow for our row number nine goes to the right. So that means I'm going to take that right piece, I'm going to flip it over that left piece, and I'm going to pin it in place. What this does is I am saving time going from the sewing machine to the ironing board. So what that means is if I take that right piece over the left, as soon as I sew this and I iron it, I'm gonna iron it like this. And guess what? You see that seam right here? That's pointing to the right now. So it saves me that extra step and it makes sure that my seam is pointing correct every single time. I, uh, when I first started pixel quilting, uh, I, I started out like everyone else does with the one pixel, one block, and I cut out a ton of different squares. And of course my brain looked at that and went, that takes forever. I do not like this Sam I am. So I figured out, well, what is a more efficient way for me to create this so it's not going to take me forever. And that's whenever I discovered this method of the chunking and I discovered the method of the pinning it and sewing it and then ironing it right away. And then row number eight, let's go ahead and quickly lay this one out. 
I don't believe there's any seams that we have to worry about in row number eight. Um, for alternating, I think everything is butting up against a solid piece. And I am correct. Everything is a solid or if it's a combined piece, it's next to a solid. But row number eight, our arrow is pointing to the left. Because the arrow is going to the left, we want to take this left piece, flip it over that right piece, and pin it in place. And then after I sew it, I can just immediately take it to the ironing board and iron it. And yeah, and, and just have it be efficient and have it be nice. Now, do I have any that it makes a difference? I do not. I do not have any vertical pieces where we have to worry about laying it out uh, and doing that. Now, normally for the previous blocks, I've just laid everything out and then I've gone back and I've pinned it. But tonight's block is so nice and quick and easy. This just makes perfect sense. Now, as I'm laying pieces out and I'm pinning them, so far rows eight and rows nine and row eight have super nice, simple, even numbers of pieces. Um, that's not going to always be the case. We may have an odd number of pieces. If you're laying this out as you're pinning it, if you have an odd number of pieces, then what you want to do is um, just leave that last one. You're going to have a, a, a little piece all by itself. That is perfectly okay, because the next pass, the next time through, we'll make sure that we include that piece, because it's okay to be all alone and by yourself, but then sometimes you want to be included. So we're going to make sure that we include that piece that next time. So, okay, row seven is to the right, two, four, six, eight. Nope, that's an even, an even row, so I can't even show you there. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video. I'm going to keep on going. Remember to, as you're laying those pieces out, follow the rows. Um, make sure that you're paying attention to the arrows. So, and that's the way that you are pinning it. So it's just super easy to go to the sewing machine and then go to the ironing board. And then, and then you have it. I fibbed earlier when I said that I, I automatically did it for row three, for row four, and then I realized I do have it. So in rows four and in rows three, you have a combined piece um, that is a vertical piece. So make sure whenever you do that, pay attention to which way the arrow is going. Uh, this is for row three, and in this case, row three, the arrow is going to the right. So I'm going to make sure that I have this piece that's facing towards the right hand side because that's important whenever we want to add our rows together we want to nest those seams uh, so please keep that in mind and I'm going to keep speeding up the video and then I'll come back and show you how to sew these after you lay out all of your pieces uh, you'll notice you'll have these two pieces left. This is perfectly natural, perfectly fine. Just take these two pieces, set them aside for future blocks, and that's it. All right, so let's get sewing. All right, with sewing, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be turning around. I'm going to be grabbing the row, and in this case, this is row number nine, and I'm going to sew the row. Now, whenever you're sewing it, I'm going to be doing a uh, scant quarter inch. If you're not sure what a scant quarter inch is, if you take a look down below in my videos, uh, you can uh, see what that is. Basically, it's just a, a way of making sure that your uh, pieces that you're sewing are more accurate for mathematics, for everything adding up, um, and, and that's really it. Now, I'm, like I said, sewing is the scant quarter inch. And then I am using my chain 
my chain piece separator to separate my pieces. Now, once I've got these pieces in, I want to have something in my machine at all times. So I'm going to turn around. I'm going to grab row number eight. I'm going to put just that first piece in and then cut away row number nine. And then that way it's not combined and I'll have to figure out all of those pieces. Uh, and it's just a lot easier, just like that. And that's how you sew them. It's that simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video as I finish sewing these. Uh, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to iron them. So let's iron it. So taking row number nine, I'm gonna lay this out one at a time. And the first thing I'm gonna do is lock those seams in. So I'm gonna sew those seams just to make sure those get locked in. And what that does is it makes sure whenever you iron it like this, there's less chance that you're gonna stretch it it's going to keep that seam a little straighter um, and you're not going to have to worry about stretching those out. Um, now you notice how the first thing I do is I do that and then I put it down. I'm not going straight up until I've already done that. All right, so that's all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to um, iron all of the rows and then I'll come back and I will show you how to pin the second pass of the rows because there's a little as a trick to it because we have remember those forgotten pieces those leftover pieces on the end so I'll show you how we pin those after I finish ironing everything so I'm going to speed up the video Second pass. Now, all from nine, eight, seven, and six, those rows have an even number, so it's not gonna be a big deal. Row number five, though, has an odd number of pieces. So row number five is, let's see, there, two, three, four, let me actually move this so I can make sure that I'm doing this correctly. Yep, 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 that's looking good so far. Yep, row number five looks good. Uh, row number five has five pieces. So what I need to do now, because I have an odd number of pieces, is I'm gonna take this first piece and set it aside. So instead of leaving off that last piece, I'm gonna leave off that first piece and, and that's it. And then, and then go ahead and pin the rest of those together. So in this case, the arrow is going to the right. So I'm gonna go right over left and pin that into place. And that's it. So I've already shown you about the arrows. I've shown you how to, um, to lay these out. Uh, so at this point, just go ahead and pin all your pieces together. Um, after I pin these together, I'm going to go ahead and sew them, iron them, and I'll come back and I will show you what to do for the last pat, the third and final pass for this block. pass uh, and the, the third and final pass um, if it has two pieces together well that one's super easy all you have to do is pin those two pieces together so just like this now whenever of course whenever you have two seams coming together I always like to pin those first and then pin those edges uh, but here's row number five Row number five has got three pieces, just like that. Um, again, the same one I pointed out last time because I had five pieces. Now with row number five, I have found when you have three pieces like this, it's actually easier and more efficient to pin it all at the same time. So you notice how I just pin that left, 
Now I'm going to flip that right over and I'm going to pin the right side. I just find that if by doing this, it's a lot faster for sewing and for ironing. It's just a lot easier to do that. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be pinning this last row and then I'm going to be uh, sewing and then ironing and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how you sew your rows together for your block. Combining rows. So what I want to do is I want to take this bottom row and I'm going to flip it up over the row right above it and I want to find where those seams nest. So you see here's the top, there's the bottom. So the very first one that nests together is right here. So I'm going to make sure that that seam right there is right up against each other and I'm going to put a pin in there. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to find the next place, which is right here, where that seams go together. You always want to match your seams up first. That's important. Match those seams up and then go back and fill in everything else. Um, now in this case, I can fill it there and there. And then I want to put a pin any time that I have a seam, whether it's on the top, whether it's on the bottom, it doesn't make a difference because whenever I'm sewing it, I don't want those seams to flip flop. I don't want them to flip the wrong way and get sewn in there because if they do, that's going to add extra bulk to my block. And that's not something that you want. If you have the top or the bottom that is larger than the other one, what you want to do is ease those seams. So pull the, um, the two pieces of fabric, put a pin in the center, pull, put a pin in the center, pull, and so on and so on. And what that does is it takes that extra bulk and it spreads it out among the entire row. So not just among that top or that bottom. Uh, and so you're not going to have like a big, a, 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 a big area um, where you have um, a big bulk of fabric. Um, and then whenever you iron it and sew it, you can see that big bulk in there. Um, and that's it. So that's all I'm doing is I'm going to pin, sew, and iron all of my seams, um, all of my rows, not my seams, all my rows. And then I will come back after doing that uh, and we will have our big block reveal. And that is block number five. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, wait, let's go this way. Hi, cutie. How are you, cutie? Hi. Can I just like pet you and love you? And I love this block so much. Th I, this is probably one of my favorite blocks of the entire quilt. I love it. Um, hope, hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you learned how to make a, a, a cat block. Now remember, you don't have to do it black. Uh, you can change the color anything you want. You can do any cat that you want. It's just, it's a Halloween quilt. So, you know, you want to have a black cat. Plus, I have two black cats. So, I, I have a, a little fondness in my heart for them. Um, don't forget to like this video. Follow my YouTube, as well as Twitter, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, Facebook. My Quite Nerdy Quilters Facebook group. Uh, TikTok all the things, and Twitch, where I stream live and you can act, interact with me. I also stream live here on YouTube. Uh, take a look at my social media on Mondays where I post my live schedule. So I will uh, see you around and thanks for being here.